Hello everyone, um, this is a tag video um, prompted by Zoe from 24 Carat Crochet. Um, she did the other day a, a video on accents which has been um, planned for a while. Um, and I love accents so I think it's absolutely fantastic that she did this and we can all contribute in our own little way. Um, so I'm going to start by answering some questions. So if you'll hear some clicks and me um, dropping eye contact is because I'm reading off the computer. So first of all I'll answer some questions um, which Zoe has set and then I'm going to give a bit of background as well because they're not clear cut the answers and then I will read some words. Um, so I think I'll do it that. Yeah I think that's what I'm going to do. Or I might just wing it. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Okay so first question is what is your accent? Well predominantly Middlesbrough and there's an emphasis on the word predominantly. Um, number two, oh there's two number twos, well I'll just say two and three. Um, are you still in the area where your accent comes from? No. Two years ago I moved to the southwest so I went from northeast to southwest. Uh, number three, has it been influenced by an area you moved to? Well, it's not this area for a start, because where I am now, um, a lot of the people I've met here in Somerset are, like myself, transplants. Um, I've heard, I've met with very few local people. Now, what I mean by local, I mean born and bred here and have the acquired, uh, not acquired, native accent. Um, so I haven't really heard much of it at all. I have heard it but it's few and far between. I just tend to hear other accents and I've actually met three people from where I come from which is amazing. So yeah it's, it's definitely not been influenced by being here. However when I was 20 I moved to a place called Rotherham from, from Middlesbrough to Rotherham and I lived there for four years and I lived and worked among the locals, the natives, there weren't many transplants at all and I did pick up a bit of the accent to the point where when I moved back to Middlesbrough three different people, uh, one within well, when I started work in 2000, so I moved back in 1995, started work in 2000, within that first year somebody said oh I didn't know you are from Middlesbrough, didn't sound like it and then two back in 2012 before I moved away both said they didn't think I was from Middlesbrough and one in fact said I sound quite well spoken but I think I'm quite well spoken, um, largely because I want to be understood. Um, I grew up mumbling, uh, often getting my words mixed up. It was like a verbal dyslexia. <laughs> I transpose letters within the same word. I don't know how that happened. I think it was nervousness. But yeah, so I, I do try to speak clearly, um, which I suppose sets me apart then from my native Middlesbrough accent. Um, what accents do you like the sound of? Oh, I love the Geordie accent. And that's another funny story. I thought when I moved to Rotherham and here in Somerset, I assumed people would think I was from Newcastle. That was a Geordie. No. Um, within the first year of moving to Rotherham, I decided to go, oh, I'll go to the news agents one time, buy a magazine about chocolate. And the man who served me, he said, he said something to do with football as in soccer. So I knew enough that he was talking about football but I didn't have a clue what he was talking about so I gave him the huh look. <laughs> and he went Liverpool, you're from Liverpool aren't you? No I'm from Middlesbrough. Oh and then he said something about Middlesbrough so well I'm not really into football I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. So lost both counts there. If I, I suppose if I was up, up in you know really interested in football I'd know what he was talking about anyway because I'd be interested in other divisions and divisions, teams, um, divisions is where they get placed. Um, yeah and just before we moved down here we were shopping for some um, <clears throat> a fridge and stuff, washing machine, cook, no not a cooker, so we were in a store called, what was it? I can't remember. <laughs> it was one of the stores where you buy appliances from. And the guy who was like helping us, he mentioned Liverpool again to, like, to me. 
you're looking forward to moving away from Liverpool. I'm not from Liverpool, I'm from Middlesbrough. But it's funny you should say that because there is definitely a Liverpoolian influence in the Middlesbrough accent. And I can hear it with some locals, my parents even, although my mum denies it. And she's going to go mad with me when she hears that. But she, she denies she says certain words in a certain way, but she does. And, but when, when she's conscious of it, she changes. Yeah. Sorry, mum, but you do. <sighs> um, and those words, what I'm talking of, are, I'll say it how I say it. Um, purple, work, word, shirt, purse, book. Um, but how I can hear locals say it, which is very similar to Liverpudlian, is purple, work, word, shirt, purse. You can hear it, purple, work, shirt. <laughs> yeah. Tex, you'll know what I'm talking about because he's originally from that area. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I can hear. And I think the reason why is because Middlesbrough is a fairly new town. It was originally a f like a farming hamlet of 25 people back in, I think it was 1801. And by 1830 it had grown. There was like the coal mining industry, um, steelworks eventually, the chemical industry, Stockton Darlington Railway. A load of people came in for jobs. So that's that's how I think we've got the Liverpool the influence in the accent. And that's how also we say, um, we, we say, away, like, come on, away. Whereas if you go further up north, you'll hear, away, it's from Geordie. Um, but Middlesbrough notorious for dropping the H's. And, of course, that with the combination of the Liverpoolian influence, you've got, um, like, hair, and I'm a her. Okay, so you'd hear people say, oh, look at me hair. Or, look at hair over there. Or they'd say, um, sometimes they say air for her, or sometimes they say her. Uh. Yeah, what accents do I like the sound of? I said I love Geordie. And no, I'm not a Geordie. Um, and also I like the Welsh. They've got a lovely lilt to it, it's a sing song. It's really, really nice and sweet. I like, I like that accent. Um, oh yeah, I can do that afterwards. I have to add a few words to the main list. Ah, place names where you live and country names. Oh yeah, that other people don't pronounce correctly. Oh, you've got me on summit now. <laughs> there's um, if that's before I read the list. But there's an area uh, which is actually in Stockton on Tees, which is the next town over from Middlesbrough. It's called. Right, a lot of people call, pronounce it wrong, and it drives me mad. Okay, so in Northumberland you have a place called Berwick upon Tweed. Um, further south you have a place called Warwick, which is in Warwickshire, and those are both spelled like Berwick is B E R W I C K, Warwick is W A R W I C K. So it's pronounced Berwick, Warwick. So it's pronounced like it's a double R, not an R W. Yeah. Well, the place in Stockton is called Ingleby Barrick, but loads of people pronounce it Ingleby Barwick. Another mispronounced place name is actually Middlesbrough itself. Now, it's spelled M-I-D-D-L-E-S-B-R-O-U-G-H, Middlesbrough, that's how we pronounce it. Um, those from outside the town, um, some of those, unless they've actually heard it pronounced, tend to pronounce it Middlesbrough, and even spell it Middlesbrough. They put the O after the B. There is no O after the B. There is if you're in Kentucky, but not in Middlesbrough, Cleveland, England. Um, and also, it's not helped much by um, some football fans who say, up the borough! They say B-O-R-O, borough, the local football team, Middlesbrough, the borough. So, they automatically put an, an O after the B and it's not there. So that does not help other people um, s um, spelling or saying Middlesbrough correctly. Um, there's another thing that they tend to say where I come from. Like, we pronounce, like, we say glass, bath, path, would say it. glass, path, bath. That we pronounce an R in there, but there's visually not. Visually, there's no R in there. Hi, I bet you didn't know, Gone. I'm um, sorry about that. Um, so what was I saying? I was saying like words like um, glass, path, and bath. Uh, 
where there's no visually letter R in there, but some people have seen to say the letter R. Moving on now for the list of words. And I will also add my own words at the end. Well, I'll, I'll say my own words at the end and then I'll add them. Type, I'll type them in. So the list of words are um, tomato, potato, herbs, basil, pecan, oregano, parmesan, pate, water, almond, caramel, vitamins, McVitie's, um, aluminium, fragile, ho hostile, sorry, I need to say hotel, <laughs> that's daft, root, data, Van Gogh. I grew up saying vase, but I think the Americans say it better, it's vase. Boy, Z, um, theatre, lilac. I also grew up saying film until my husband pointed out that there is no U between the L and the M, it's film. Okay, so I do say film now. Um, but where I come from, we say film. Okay, um, defence, button, crochet, leisure, advertisement, Derby, Birmingham, Canterbury, Worcester, Leicester, that's where my husband's from, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Moscow, Italy. And the words I'd like to add are curry, um, book, plate, mobile, phone, grass, of course, glass, bath, path, aqua, and a place named called Berkshire. Uh, yeah, that's all. So I will sort this video out and upload it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the accent story. That was brilliant. I like that. Um, great idea. Sorry. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.